Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome back to another video. It is my Liverpool versus Manchester City preview in the Premier League. First versus second, doesn't get much more exciting and important than this. Everyone's talking this up as the title decider, not as in whoever wins this is going to win the title, but these are the two favourites to win the league. Chelsea are in there too, but this one uh, at Anfield, we saw the excitement of the game last season in both the uh, Premier League and the Champions League. Um, so, you know, we know the importance. We know the importance that the crowd are going to have on this game. We've just come back from a very limp display in Naples, which, you know, won't help our momentum, obviously. Might not help our mindset, but we are still we've got to be realistic about things. We've got to be positive. We are still in a terrific position in the league. No one would have thought we'd have this many points after seven games. So we've got to capitalise on this. And in my mind, it's must not lose. Obviously, if we win and we can go into this international break, three points clear at the top of the Premier League, having got out of the way a really tough run of fixtures, then that would be staggering. Um, but by the same token, you know, it's a disaster if we lose really to already be losing ground on Man City. Um, but, you know, if, if we do draw it and we're level pegging with them, having got this out of the way without our players being in particularly great form, especially our attacking players, and I think that's a positive um, result. And I think most sensible fans would agree. You might not. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I thought a draw would be fine at Spurs. We got a win. I thought a draw would be fine at Chelsea. We got it and everyone was happy with it. Obviously, it was a the circumstances there. Daniel Sturridge getting a late equaliser. But I, I still think here, if you offer me a draw right now against City, I would reluctantly take it. You know, I, I still think we can get the win and we are the favourites to do so, even if it's odds against favourites. We're seven to five with the bookmakers to get the win over City. So it's less likely that we do it. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's less likely than not, but yeah, it's it's coming off that performance in Naples where we were completely flat. Um, you know, I got back on Thursday and uh, having having sat in that ground on Wednesday night, it was it was the away end was how I've not seen it an away end in a long time. Now I know it was a lot worse sort of this time last year when we were losing 4-1 at Spurs and we got beat 5-0 at Man City and our defence was all over the place. Uh, there were many, many problems, you know, the goalkeeper for a start, um, lack of options in midfield, defence very shaky, still hadn't established a, a, a real back four that we could believe in. Now we've done most of those things. Um, it was so strange to see that performance in Naples and we, it was such a de dejected team on the pitch and such a dejected um, set of fans in the away and we were you know I know you're supposed to sing your, sing your hearts out and um, keep on singing throughout the bad times but we to be honest we were sat we were sitting in our chairs which we never normally do um, the rain was pouring down it was cold it was dark it was moody um, you know shenanigans before the game for some people maybe didn't help I mean I know we got in, we, we encountered a bit of trouble um, but yeah just kind of sitting in that away and thinking Christ this is just a dreadful dreadful game and yeah Liverpool couldn't get into it and Momentum's kind of stopped a little bit. We lost that game against Chelsea uh, in the League Cup. Then we went and drew there, which was a great result. Um, and then this in Naples. So that's three games without a win. Yeah, it's all coming towards this one. It's all coming towards this, not the title decider, but you know the significance of this game, even at this point in the season, is huge. We cannot lose the game. We simply cannot lose it. I don't think we're going to make too many changes to the 11. Uh, Naby Keita obviously went off early in Naples and... Um, but to be honest, he was struggling a lot in the game anyway. I'm not sure what was wrong with him. Like 50 minutes, he was giving the ball away, not looking where he was passing. It was really quite a bizarre performance. Henderson came on, wasn't great by any means, but he seems to take most of the criticism, which unfortunately is just the way it is on social media now. Jordan Henderson um, can have exactly the same game as the other 10 players on the pitch, and he'd be the one that would get the most stick. Um, Sadly, that's how it is. I think Henson has played some decent games this season. Um, you know, against PSG, I thought he was outstanding. This is a similar prospect at Anfield uh, in a big game under the lights. Um, yeah, let's not get on his back. In terms of the starting eleven, I think the back five still does pick itself. I've, I've heard some people on, on other kind of media suggesting that Nathaniel Klein could play. I can't see that happening. Uh, I cannot see any changes to the back five that have done well for us so far this season, even if... We've had a couple of hiccups as of late. Uh, yeah, Pal Allison, Trent, Van Dijk, Gomez and Robertson. Midfield, I am going to go Henderson, Van Aldem and Milner. I'd be surprised if it wasn't that. I know Keita is available for selection, but whether he's available to start, I don't know. But even so, I'd still be a bit surprised. Um, 
other than that, what what have you even got that, that can come in and play there? Uh, you've got Fabinho, but he, uh, I don't think he's quite up to this game. Uh, and in the front three, even that doesn't pick itself at the moment. You know, Normally when I get to this point in the preview and I'm talking about the team, I say, obviously the front three is Manny, Firmino and Salah, but is it that obvious? Is it that obvious? And not even from a form point of view, just maybe something just to surprise Man City, because they're prepared for the 11 that I would say, which is the, the, the eight names I've mentioned, and Mane, Mane Firmino and Salah. Do you throw something else in there? I'd be, I'd be really interested to see Shakiri start. I really, really would. I'd be interested to see Sturridge start. Obviously not both of them. But if you know, if you want to maybe throw one of them in there and then have Mane or Salah um, off the bench to come on, I don't think that would be... I, th- I wouldn't be absolutely shocked if that happened, but if it's me picking the team, I'm going for the normal front three. I keep talking about us playing Salah into form. For me... Um, it has become a thing now. I mean, you know, it, it was a thing after four or five games, and even you know after twice as many games now, it's an even bigger thing. He, you, if you watch him, he's definitely short of confidence for whatever reason. He's definitely not just not making good decisions. He's snatching at shots. He's rushing his passing. He's not taking players on with as much conviction as he normally does. I'm not sure whether it's the pressure of suddenly being the PFA Player of the Year and one of the best players in the world. Um, I honestly don't know what it is. Players do go in and out of form. We've seen it with Harry Kane. Couldn't score in August for a few seasons. Um, Eden Hazard literally drops off the face of the earth for a whole six months at times, you know? So it can happen to the best players, but because Salah has obviously only done this for one season at this level, there is obviously people saying he's a one-season wonder, which I don't think he is because you, you aren't that good. You know, you, you can be a striker that scores 30 goals, 30 tappings, and you know, a few penalties in there and stuff, but Mo Salah's goals were outrageous, outrageous goals, which isn't, you know, that's not just a bit of luck falling your way and, you know, the stars all aligning. He was showing traits of a genuinely world-class player, which I do believe he is. He's suffering a crisis of confidence and it doesn't help the fact that Firmino is not quite at his best level. He's having moments, he's having good games. Mane, likewise, Mane started the season brilliantly, um, but has since kind of dragged himself down to Salah's level. So yeah, it, it is a concern, which is why I think this is the game where it's got to all come together. Um, this is the last game before the international break, and I honestly couldn't think of a better game than Man City at home, because it is a game where both teams kind of thrive off chaos. It's not going to be a controlled, you know, Napoli away-esque kind of mundane pace. Not sure whether to go for the win or not, not sure whether to stick or twist. I think both teams are going to go quite hell for leather here. I know both teams would settle for a point but it's not in their makeup to turn up to this game in, a, in the Premier League on a, on a Super Sunday um, with the whole world watching first versus second um, favourites versus second favourites champion versus challengers and go for a draw I've never seen Pep Guardiola do that for Man City in the Premier League I've never seen Jurgen Klopp really do that with the exception of the Champions League run when we had league games in between against the likes of Everton away and we, we were kind of settling for, for a point there I suppose but here at home against Man City, where we've got a couple of weeks off after, I cannot think of anything other than just us absolutely going for this. Um, it's a, such a shame we don't have Oxlade-Chamberlain available to us. I think it's becoming so obvious now why he's so missed. He would, he really would be the perfect number eight in this team with you know Vinaldum and Milner maybe um, in the in the number six and whatever and number ten or whatever's left. Um, yeah, it's a shame to have that driving force on for midfield, which Shakiri can be, Naby Keita can be, but I don't think Keita's quite there yet. You might disagree, I just don't think he's followed up that brilliant performance against West Ham. I don't know, he just seems like he's still in the shell slightly, uh, not really expressing himself, but that, that will come. Same with Fabinho, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a really tough game to call. Man City have got problems of their own. Um, you know, Benjamin Mendy's injury has hit them you know, relatively hard of late. I know they've got a deep squad, but left back is that position where Mendy's one of a kind really for them. You know, they've got Delph who's also out. They've got Laporte who's filled in a couple of times at left back. They got Zinchenko, but Mendy's the one that bombs forward and's got a brilliant delivery. Um, just like Walker on the right hand side. They've got Danilo that can kind of fill in in either position, but it's obviously not ideal for them. And they haven't really got a settled back four or three. You know, they, there's talk they could go three at the back here. Um, you know, Company, Stones, Laporte and Otamendi as their four centre-backs and it, you know, it really could be any pairing. I, I would suggest 
that they will go for company and Laporte. I don't think Stones played particularly well at Anfield last season. Uh, if they are going to play Mendy, if not, they might go Laporte at left back uh, and go for Stones and company, or they could go for all three of those companies, Stones and Laporte. Um, and go for wing backs. You know, we've seen Sane play a bit of wing back at times. You know, so yeah, it's unpredictable. Man City are very unpredictable with their team selections. You do see Pep throw in the crazy selection from now and then, now and um, every now and then. But Sane, Sterling, and Aguero as a front three, you'd be surprised if it wasn't that. And I'd be surprised if Fernandinho, Bernardo Silva, and David Silva weren't all on the pitch as well. So with that in mind, I would suggest a four-three-three is most likely. Kevin De Bruyne is back in training and apparently available for selection, but you'd be shocked if he came and started at Anfield. I thought he was tremendous, by the way, uh, in the 4-3 last season at Anfield when we just shaded them. I thought he, every time he got the ball, I was shitting my pants and he was he was sort of finding such perfect delivery every single time. Uh, and we know Bernardo, who started this season very well, is capable of that as well. And David Silva just seems to find space no matter where he is. So, yeah, it's... No one's really talking about Man City so far this season because they're expected to have 19 points from seven games. You know they're probably expected to have 21, but you know they're, they're still they're still simmering. They're still ready to go into that next gear, and I think Liverpool are as well, and I think Chelsea are still. They've still got gears to go through, so it makes for a fascinating title race. And this is another instalment in it. We've seen Chelsea versus Liverpool, um, but you know as much as that game was probably the game of the season so far in terms of title versus title contenders and you know the quality on the pitch it was the best game it still felt like um the elephant in the room was the fact that man city are you know centurions and champions and the team we still need to catch so this is where they get truly tested man city have they got it in them to go again and win the title again no one seems to do it anymore if they can come to anfield and, and blow us away then you know you have to make them strong, strong favourites. They'd be they'd be breathing space between them, us, and Chelsea, um, and yeah, you'd kind of struggle to see past them. So I think it's important to avoid defeat so that um, there doesn't become that gap where City can kind of begin to pull away. I think we need to keep them at arm's length, and you know a point here would do that. Three points, and you know we can start we can start really thinking ahead and really start dreaming, but. The atmosphere is going to play a huge part. I cannot stress that enough. They don't like it, Man City. They do not like coming to Anfield. They never win here. They haven't done since 2003. They didn't like the reception they got with the coach last season. Um, so they're coming in an alternative route. You could, you know, you could perceive that as them showing their hands, showing they don't like it. So let's get up for it. It's a Sunday afternoon. Um, you know, it's, it's a good kickoff time. I feel it's not like one of these early ones where you can't get up for it. It's a good late afternoon kickoff. Um, you know, it'll be under the lights by the time the game's over. And yeah, I just cannot wait. It's a really exciting game. Great one to send us into the break. My prediction is going to be a draw. I'm sitting on the fence. I've got splinters. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Um, I think, you know, is Raheem Sterling going to finally show what he can do at Anfield? He hasn't really done it since he moved to Man City. Aguero loves a goal against us. Sane scored against us a few times last season. You know, I, I, I'm going to go for Aguero and Sane to score for City. And I'm going to go for... Um, Mane to score twice for Liverpool there you go that's my prediction it's 2-2 draw obviously I want the win so don't be slagging me off just calling me negative I, I just think it would be okay you know it will be okay um, we can still go on and win the league if we get a draw and I think you know we've got as good a chance as anyone yes we were very poor at midweek but we've still got enough firepower and enough gears to go through to make a big dent in this title race so those are my thoughts, guys. The vlog will be coming after the game. I'm going to get back quite late Sunday night, so it might be a Monday morning upload, but we'll see. Um, check out the Napoli vlog if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Drop a like on the video. Leave a comment with your score prediction and your team, uh, you know, the 11 you'd pick. And, yeah, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and Facebook, and I'll see you next time.